they're even even things like death adders that are, we know are about 70 percent of them are offered a toad will eat it the numbers of death adders have actually increased with fog dam since toads have arrived um, so no it's, it's not quite as straightforward as that but that's generally it if, if they're not interested in eating toads then they're perfectly safe if they are interested in eating toads then they're in trouble but the population can persist because you've removed that goanna predation and there have been various stories about some snakes being able to tolerate eating Yes. So is that, are they true? Yes. So this is one of them. So it's, this is a slaty gray snake. So the three snakes I'm going to show you are the three most common snake species here. And together they'll make up about 95% of the snakes, individual snakes you see at Fog Dam. This is the first one, a slaty gray snake. This is one of the ones that I, that I study, a non-venomous generalist predator. So it'll eat rats, birds, fish, amphibians. It can eat cane toads. It's, it's about a 30 times more tolerant to toad toxin than, than pythons or elapids are. And the reason for that is that this is a colubrid and its lineage is from Southeast Asia. It's a, rel it's a relatively recent arrival to Australia. When I say recent, I mean probably five million years ago, as opposed to pythons, which were here 50 million years ago. So this guy's ancestors are from Southeast Asia and Southeast Asia has toads, not cane toads, but other toads. And these guys, this guy's ancestors evolved to eat toads. So he has got, even though he's never seen a toad, he's got the genes from his ancestors from Southeast Asia that allow him to eat toads. So this is a, one of the guys that do have tolerance, resistance to toad toxin. It's not something they can look, they, they develop as individuals. It has to be something from their ancestral past that they're carrying in the genes. So this is one of them. And the other one, 